the hospital. Exactly what happened. Basically, um, went up to do an air, tried to do a little bit of a slob, landed a little bit straighter than normal, and just tried to sort of collect it, tried to pick it back up when I should have probably left it. And I just felt this like, like a little clicks, and I was like, ow! Oh! Um, yeah, immediately went hot, had to swim in. Yeah, that was yesterday. All right, come sit down and we'll take a look. Let's go and slide your heel up this bed as far as you can go. Can I use my hands? Yeah, you can use your hands. About there. Not much. <laughs> so based on the way Kale landed, which is where his leg bowed in and heard a few popping noises, we suspect the MCL is likely injured. I'm gonna bend your knee for you this time. Don't try and fight me. Stop if it's too sore. Put my hand here and here, and you just let me know when you want to stop. That's it. Bend with me. Because there's also a twist involved and it was a fast movement, we have to rule out ACL and meniscus tear too. So the first point of call will be getting an MRI to confirm an accurate diagnosis, which is really going to help streamline your rehab. In the meantime, because we're stuck up here in Exmouth, we're going to start some early physio anyway. And the goal of that is going to be to control the swelling, early weight bearing, and early restoration of range of motion. That's our initial phase and our focus. The medial collateral ligament is a wide, thick band of tissue that runs down the inner part of the knee from the femur, your thigh bone, to the tibia, your shin bone. The MCL makes up a part of an incredibly important biological matrix of the knee. As far as its role that it plays in surfing, it's definitely responsible, um, or part of the chain that's responsible for a lot of extension and flexion, so a lot of um, compressing down and extending our body tall. It could also be seen as a bit of a shock absorber for when we're um, landing, landing maneuvers and when um, we're taking you know, big drops on a surfboard as well. Um, and yeah, it's an integral part of the whole, of the whole line of connective um, tissue that, that is needed um, to really be uh, in harmony with the rest of the body. The knee is rotated a lot of the time turns and airs, there's rotation within the knee, and there's also forces that are pushing it laterally, especially when you do airs. If you land with any sort of flexion and rotation, you're gonna put huge forces on MCL and on ACL. So uh, very common to, to injure these um, major components of the knee in surfing. Knee injuries amongst surfers are a dime a dozen. I want to use my rehab journey to have a look at how we can come back from them and how we can prevent them from happening. If you want to surf forever and remain knee injury free, then this video is for you. Brought to you as always by thesurfersroadmap.com, the go-to for all surf progression. Check it out at the link in the description below. Look at my little diagram. And uh, one of them was this one here where I sort of unhinged the leg and the goal was to get the heel to touch the drawers and it's doing that now there's a little bit of pain so when you think about a ligament in particular when you strain a ligament it's healing and when you get early range of motion and early weight bearing going you're pulling the fibers in the direction that it wants to be healing so you're sort of making it normal whereas if you um, kept it still the fibers are going to heal but they might heal a bit knotty in a way so that's why early range of motion early weight bearing will help normalize the direction of the tissue healing we really want to stay away from even if it is a blunt trauma from um kind of just treating the symptoms so the knee is kind of in the middle of two big kind of body weight centers of the body one being the foot and ankle and then the other being the pelvis and lower back so generally whenever i see knee injuries i'll also see if not both, I'll see a pathology in one of those other areas. So I'll see that their pelvis is out 
um, and I'll see that specifically, more often than not, the side of the knee that is injured, I'll see that hip being out of alignment where the muscles or the length tension relationship, so the relationship between the muscles of the front of the hips and the back of the hips, they're usually out. So the pulley system is a bit out of whack. So what you want to do while also treating the specific knee injury is also look at the alignment of the pelvis and then the intelligence of the feet because that will affect greatly how much pressure the knee has to receive. So we generally want to work out our alignment, getting some integrity in the butt, opening up tight hips. I've done my MCL grade two a couple of years ago. I was still walking around as best as I could with special attention to how I was walking. Uh, I was still squatting to the degree that I could without pain. Um, I was doing a lot of work on the floor, like from lying on my back, like hip extension exercises, just to keep everything active. Uh, and then I was using every other part of my body that I could that gave me zero pain as well. So I just kept everything moving, my spine, my hips, um, upper body strength. And then it was about lower body, just kind of seeing what I could do that didn't cause me any pain at all. Um, and with that, I just, that changes the body. If you're eating well, um, and if you've got a generally good lifestyle, your body is disposition is to heal pretty quickly. So if you can send it the right messages as well by keeping on moving, um, your body will want to heal. I've got a follow-up appointment with Mike today. Fingers crossed that everything's um, okay. So when you're standing, you're not straightening the right leg. So you're standing with a flex knee. Yeah. So it's really important in these early stages to get your knee straight. It just it just feels like that that sort of pressure's there. Yep. On the in on the medial side. Yep. yep. Well, you've got healing tissue because it's only been a couple of weeks, so it's going to grab. You've just got to know that it's still healing. I know you want it to be better right away. <laughs> Everything's within comfort. Yeah. He's come further than he thinks. He's uh, very keen to accelerate this process, but um, we must respect the healing tissues. But every time I see him, uh, which I'm seeing him daily, I see huge leaps, um, which he doesn't notice as much because he's still frustrated he's not doing airs. <laughs> I'm bored. I'm so bored, it's ridiculous. What? Oh my God. People expect their he uh, rehab and healing is going to be linear. It looks more like um, a tangled up piece of spaghetti. Right, it's a big curvy line. Basically, you have like, oh, oh my god, I feel great, and then oh, it's back to the start again. This sucks. After that initial denial, and then a bit of shock. Uh, I think there's sadness when it when you're talking about athletes because you're not able to do the thing you love, and that is truly suffering for for these people. And my recovery, it's actually still going, but um. Yeah, I'm, I'm 20, 22 years in, but I've come so far and yeah, I've got a little way to go, but I'm just, I've got to keep pushing. <laughs> I, don't want you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the wedding. Today, yeah, um, yeah. I've got like, done these for me and then... As soon as I found surfing, which wasn't until five or six, five years after, I think it was like five or six years after, and um, it was 
it was yeah a bit my it changed my life like it just I don't know. You can't. You, you can turn it. You can turn a terrible day into a good day as soon as you've had a fun little wave, or, or just spend a bit of time in the ocean. So, I think yeah, uh, uh, the anger sort of, not the anger, but just sort of the emotional roller coaster of after having a life-changing injury and having the ocean back. I think it was um, yeah, it just sort of gave you something else to look forward to. Mega grateful. We're, we're, we're getting more amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Why'd you drop in on me? What? You uh, bastard. Every way. <laughs> oh, it's just a breath of fresh air. A bit of um, a bit of perspective, you know. And Barney's just frothing. There are a couple of stages there. <laughs> We were just freaking because Barney fell off a wave and then he's just rolling back and he's kicking back and he's like, I'm okay! <laughs> oh, it was a bit of a shambles going to like get him and put him back on the board, but no, that was really, really nice. <laughs> yeah! The human body is an amazing thing and it can be pushed so hard and can can bounce back from pretty amazing things and you see that through a lot of the top athletes and and just just knowing how it can achieve and and, and um, recover is always something that you know in the back of your head that you can do. Yeah. Are you when you can't do the thing you love, it really does start to put you into um, sadness. What then comes, I think, especially with well-trained athletes or athletes that have had an injury before, is acceptance, where you go, right, it is what it is, and now I need to work on it. I have to accept what's happened. I can't change it, and that's the big turning point. So I um, hit a little milestone today. Uh, I've started doing some squats, which is nice. Only 90 degrees or so, but uh, hey, this is this is progress. So that's good. Feeling not too bad. I reached out to the guys at Pod Active. They gave Mick Fanning one of these knee braces that got him in the water pretty quick after his injury. And they sent me one and I'm really excited because I think with this on, I'm gonna be able to get in the water. It's exciting. Yeah, that will do. How's it feel? Yeah. I don't know how it looks, but it feels very good. I just want to get out there. I'm so I'm so excited. I'm a little bit nervous. Got it. Just grabbed a big foamy from town just to give it a crack, and hopefully it all hopefully it all works out. I'm just so so excited to get back in the water.
best feeling ever. Like seriously, after my first wave, I just felt like dunking my head under and just soaking it up. I've never had so much surfing energy in my body before that's not been used. So to just crank a few waves out, even though it wasn't like surfing how I wanted to surf, it was just the most beautiful thing ever. So I'm frothing, a couple hours in, I'm just gonna re uh, rest and relax now and just see how the knee pulls up, maybe ice it or whatever, see what happens. So when I did the knee, um, Chili reached out and said, hey, do you wanna have a chat with James about building a rehab board? Because James, um, James Chili himself had injured his knee previously and built his own rehab board. And of course I said yes. So this is the end result of that chat. It's the, the mid strength, it's Chili's mid length board. I would actually call it though, something like a like a big fish um, and the idea is to surf a board that's going to turn easily without having to put too much pressure through the knee um, the foamy at this stage I'm just not able to really perform the way I want to so I'm going to try this out as a twin fin um, it does come with a, a thruster setup but yeah I want to try it as a 20 and see how it goes Oh, this board just turns like no other big board I've ever tried. It's almost like it's a, rather than a mid-length, it's, like it's like a big fish, but in a much better, better sense. It's just really pivoty and like as soon as you get your back foot right here over the fins, you can just sort of pivot. It's really forgiving, you can like kind of bury the rail even. I've never really surfed a a long board like that before. This is this is really fun. So yeah, this is perfect to to get the knee better and nice and strong. I'm frothing. Nice little green apple too. <laughs> and you also have have to have a very level um, mindset when it comes to approaching your rehab and re-entering your sport. You have to be ready. Uh, when I was working with footy players. Um, a good piece of advice that I found was really effective was that you have to train twice at 100% before you can play. Because if you can't train at 100%, how can you play at 100% when you've got all these other factors around you? You've got other players, you've got the competition factor, and you've got the arousal, which is really high. So I think being prepared to play is really important too. spend some time in the resting squat position because that has the ability to decompress the spine so it keeps the pelvis area really happy um, and it takes our knee in or knee, knee and hip in a range that is really common in surfing. I would also get quite strong on or at least balanced on one leg. Getting familiar, um, coordinated as well as strong on one leg, that feeds the whole chain of getting the foot strong, the ankle strong, the knee strong and the muscles around the hip strong. Lunging is really good again because it takes you off balance, off axis, uh, and it's dynamic. So lunging is really good, and then the bend pattern, so a deadlift pattern, and that that exercises those between those exercises, they kind of really will safeguard the knee. You're never going to eliminate the chance of injury, but they will get them get them quite strong. <laughs> 